The Blue Lions are home to the chivalrous knights of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, known for their mastery over the lands. The Blue Lion's house is spearheaded by the future King Dimitri and is accompanied by an array of different students who all come together under one house to learn from you, the professor, if this is the house that you decided to choose. Hello, my name is JAIK, and like I promised, here are what I think are some of the best classes for your students when playing through Fire Emblem Three Houses. Keep in mind that these are, at best, suggestions. So if you're dead set on doing a priest-only run, then I'm not here to stop you. In fact, I encourage experimenting. Use this video if you're lacking inspiration, need ideas, or if the class system seems incredibly overwhelming. And so, without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting right off, we're going to be talking about the Blue Lion's house leader himself, Dimitri, who has the personal ability Royal Lineage, which multiplies experience earned by 1.2 times. He also has the Minor Crest of Bladid, which occasionally doubles attack and weapon uses for combat arts. I think there are going to be two paths that I think most people will take Dimitri down into. The first is Noble, into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, and then into his two personal classes, High Lord and Great Lord. The other one is if you want a Master class, so Noble, into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, his Master class, Bow Knight, into High Lord, and then finally Great Lord. Dimitri will realistically end in his personal class, the Great Lord, a class that you unlock as you play the game. But before you get there, there are a few options that you can consider with him. You can go down the Paladin route, which takes use of his proficiency in lances, while making use of his budding talent in writing, which grants you seal movement which could maybe come in handy when you're keeping your healer safe. Otherwise, picking up Desperation, Movement plus 1 are all fantastic skills that are worth picking up otherwise. If you have the chance to go into the Master class, Bow Knight is the path of least resistance as he neither likes nor dislikes bows. The reason we don't touch Great Knights is because he hates using axes, but it's another option that you can consider if you don't like Bow Knights. His third option is Noble into Myrmidon, into Mercenary slash Lord, into Swordmaster, finally ending in his personal classes, High Lord and Great Lord. The other path for Dimitri is obviously the Swordmaster route. You can replace Mercenary with Lord, but again, with Dimitri not liking Axis, the proficiency test could be a little bit RNG to get into. If you're not comfortable with the RNG, you can dip into the Lord class, which makes use of his sword and authority, which Dimitri should excel in. But if you do end up in the Mercenary class, you get to pick up the Vantage skill, which is a great skill to have over the Resistance plus 2 that the Lord gives. However, Lord does give Dimitri a better battalion use, so it's really up to you what you value at the end of the day. The class progression capitalizes on raising his speed, so when you get to the Great Lord class, you should never be outsped, even by the fastest enemies. But you won't really be raising lance ranks until you're a High Lord, so keep this in mind if you're going down this path. His fourth path, Noble into Soldier into Armored Knight, Fortress Knight into High Lord into finally Great Lord is another option that's worth consideration, which capitalizes on top of Dimitri being tanky. This gives the additive bonuses towards his defenses and resistances while also giving you weight minus 5 upon mastery, but it could mess up his speed a little bit as bonuses for going into Armored Knight actually subtracts away from his speed. So, with that being said, his final option is Noble into Fighter, into Brawler, into Grappler, into High Lord, and then finally ending in Great Lord. Dimitri naturally has good speed growth to make use of the quad punching that the Brawler class can provide. While you won't end up in the Warmaster class, it doesn't really affect Dimitri too hard as he's just going to punch everyone to death anyways. The downside to this path is, is that you aren't really maximizing his proficiencies, body talent, etc. You literally put him in this class because you could, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing. The next character we're going to be talking about is Dimitri's right hand man, Dedu, who rocks the personal ability, Staunch Shield. If unit takes no action except weight, grants defense plus 4 for 1 turn. Dedu also does not have a crest. The first class that I think most people will take Dedu down into is the Commoner, into Fighter, into Armored Knight, and finally ending in Fortress Knight. This looks to be the no-brainer class for Dudu to make good use of his proficiencies plus maximizing on his personal skill, Staunch Shield. 
and it looks to be the canon class for Dudu as well, but the problem with going through this class progression is that you're at a dead end at Fortress Knight. With Dudu not liking writing, you're wasting a lot of time trying to level a decent enough writing level for Dudu to even get into the Great Knight class. And while the requirements for writing is kind of on the lower side in comparison to axes and heavy armor, it could just depend on your RNG to get into the Great Knight class, and I don't know if that's something that you want to do, so consider this next option instead. The next option is Commoner, into Fighter, into Brawler, into Grappler, and finally into Warmaster. And the opposite of that, Commoner, into Fighter, into Brigand, into Warrior, finally ending in Warmaster. Like Caspar in the Black Eagle's house, Dudu is kinda like that, but instead of having speed, Dudu favors tank stats and strength. Think of him like another Raphael in that sense. I recommend going down the warrior route with Dudu and having gauntlet weapons on the side to fight enemies that Dudu can't one-shot. The reason why I recommend warrior over grappler is simply for the additive bonuses that the classes provide, but ultimately it's your call. Dudu can excel in both classes. Ending in Warmaster seems to be his greatest option. And finally, it's commoner into fighter into brigand into wyvern knight and wyvern lord. This is the grindmaster path because the dude will absolutely despise you for making him go into a flying class. But the added bonus for this class is that while you get to maintain and keep your tanky stats and the axe and lance proficiency, you get a ton of movement thanks to the flyer movement bonuses. But again, do keep in mind that this path is incredibly grindy because the dude really does not like flying, but your labor can bear fruit. I just can't say the same about your sanity as you grind his flying stats. The next character we're going to be talking about is Annette, whose personal ability is Perseverance. Use Rally to grant strength plus 4 to an ally. She also has the Minor Crest of Dominic, which occasionally conserves uses of magic attack. With that in mind, I think there are two main paths that most people will take Annette down into. The first is Noble, into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and finally ending in Grammary. The second is Noble, into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and finally ending in Dark Knight. This will be the most common path that most players will take Annette down into because, well, she's the token mage of the Blue Lions route, and probably the only one that you'll get. She gets a nice spell list that you can take advantage of, such as things like Excalibur that's effective against flying units, giving you a nice anti-flyer, and Annette also gets a decent faith magic spell list, being able to get things like Recover and Abraxas. The two final master classes that you can consider are Gremory and Dark Knight for Annette, which provides different benefits for both, different additive bonuses, and they both take different proficiencies to get there, so plan accordingly to what you need. But both classes will provide the best for Annette. Annette's third path is Noble into Monk into Priest into Bishop and finally ending in Gremory. You can make use of Annette as a healer as well. But know that her faith magic list isn't as big or as good as Mercedes, but is serviceable enough to make her your secondary healer assuming you make Mercedes your main healer. While she lacks physics, she can get an early recover which could come in clutch at certain moments and parts of the game. It is worth consideration, but you do want to end up in either Gremory or Holy Knight. It will again depend on what you prefer, but I recommend Gremory. The fourth option to consider is Dancer. And while Annette could theoretically be your best dancer, I think the utility that she provides from Rally is already good, that I think it's best to recruit someone else from a different house and make her your dancer if that's at all possible. She comes with good magic and authority which are qualities that dancers seem to seek, and her strength is middling but it ain't that bad, so if you are doing a no recruitment run, Annette could be your dancer. On a side note, Annette has a proficiency in axes, but please do not try and capitalize on axes. It'll make your early game miserable and she caps at a really low strength stat of 43 in comparison to her magic cap of 73. So realistically, just raise axe levels in a class up to C to get axe prowess 3 so you can make use of her personal weapon, but please don't level up her axe proficiencies to make her a strength based class. The next character we're going to be talking about is Ash, whose personal ability is Lockpick, which allows unit to open doors and chests without keys. Ash also does not have a crest. With someone like Ash, I think there are going to be two main paths that most people will take Ash down into. The first one being more common, and that's commoner into fighter into archer into sniper, and then finally ending in bow knight. And the second one is commoner into soldier into cavalier into paladin, and also ending in the bow knight class. The obvious class that you make Ash at the end is the Bow Knight class. However, there are two different ways to get there, either through Archer or Cavalier. 
The Archer Sniper line will give Ash a backline role where he'll be chipping from the back. However, going through this line can screw Ash in the strength department, so keep this in mind. Otherwise, you can go through the Cavalry line, which can not only help him with his low strength stat, but also get him desperation, so by the time he gets to Bow Knight, he has that option. From experience, I think going down the Cavalier line might be more beneficial, though it takes time for it to ramp up, as you have to go through his budding talent first. But by being on a horse, you can quickly take and get chest faster than if you were a sniper. You also need a little bit of help from your allies if you're an archer as well, especially if you don't have close counter as a skill. Some of the more niche options that you can consider for Ash is Commoner, into Fighter, into Brigand, into Wyvern Knight, and finally ending in Wyvern Lord. You can also consider going down the Wyvern Lord path. You get to patch up his low strength by giving him axes, you get better strength additive bonuses, and you get to abuse flyer movement to get chests quickly. You also get to make use of his proficiency in axes, and all you have to do is work on flying and a lance budding talent, which he neither likes or dislikes, which isn't the worst thing ever. The fourth and the most niche option is turning Ash into a Holy Knight by going through the Commoner, into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, and finally ending in the Holy Knight class. This is if for some reason you do not like the Bow Knight and that isn't your thing. Then the Holy Knight is something that you can consider as Ash does get physics in C and he doesn't like or dislike faith magic. However, this route is not recommended as it's more work than the other classes that I've recommended above. The next character that we're going to be talking about is Felix, who rocks the personal ability Lone Wolf. Unit deals 5 extra damage when no battalion is assigned or when endurance is 0. He also has the crest of Fraudarius, which sometimes raises might when using a weapon. With someone like Felix, you're realistically going to end up in Mortal Savant, but there are different ways to get into this class. The first is Noble, into Myrmidon, into Mercenary, into Swordmaster, and finally ending in Mortal Savant. The second one is Noble, into Myrmidon, into Mercenary, into Hero, and finally ending in Mortal Savant. And the third path is Noble, into Myrmidon, into Thief, into Assassin, and finally ending in Mortal Savant. The first is just raising a sword and reason magic proficiency. While Felix does have a dislike in reason magic at first, it becomes a net gain once you get into his budding talent skill. Next is raising a little bit of axe proficiency to get vantage from mercenary and hero before raising your reason magic proficiency to get into mortal savant. And finally it's going down a thief route to get lethality from assassin and end in mortal savant. All offer different things but they'll end at the same pathway. I recommend looking into what you think best fits your playstyle or a path that seems the most fun for you. I personally did both swordmaster and assassin and my felix ended up becoming one of my best characters. The final route that's worth consideration is going down the brawler route as Felix likes punching things, starting with Noble, into Fighter, into Brawler, into Grappler, and finally ending in War Master. And Felix also has the speed to quad things consistently. You're going to end up in War Master which asks you to get an axe proficiency but it's a minor speed bump to get into the War Master class. But like, you know, having him go down this path and then having him always talk about swords does kind of make it a little weird story wise so I guess consider that. The next character, and a personal favorite of mine from the Blue Lion's house, is Ingrid, whose personal ability Lady Knight grants Might plus 3 and Hit plus 5 with Gambits. She also has the minor crest of Daphnil, which sometimes raises Might when using combat arts. With this in mind, I think there are going to be two main paths that most people will take Ingrid down into. The first is Noble into Soldier, into Pegasus Knight, into Paladin, and finally ending in Falco Knight. The second is Noble, into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, and finally ending in Falco Knight. This class progression is admittedly a little awkward, so there might be a lot to dip into here and there, but you're going to end up as a Falcon Knight. Either way, you have to raise both flying and riding proficiency, which is a pain, especially for a character that struggles early but picks up late. But by the time you get a Lance Fair from being a Paladin class and getting movement plus one as a class mastery, you can make her a Falcon Knight with the flyer utility being one of the best. Falco Knights does seem to be her canon ending class, but there are a few other options that you can consider. Ingrid's third option is Noble into Fighter, into Pegasus Knight, into Wyvern Knight, and finally ending in Wyvern Lord. I don't recommend this per se because Falcon Knight is much better, but you can go all out on a flyer route but end in the Wyvern Lord class for a smoother transition from Wyvern Knight to Lord. Her 4th, 5th, and 6th options are her Mortal Savant options. Like Felix, she has 3 different ways to get there. Noble into Myrmidon into Mercenary into Swordmaster. Noble into Myrmidon into Thief into Swordmaster. 
Noble, Myrmidon, Thief, Assassin, and all of them finally ending in Mortal Savant. Another master class that you can consider is the Mortal Savant class because that can make use of Ingrid's mixed growth in both strength and magic. She also gets a decent spell list and can make use of the Levin Sword, etc., making her a great Mortal Savant. And like Felix, you have a few different ways to get there, and it again falls on you for what you want. I personally just recommend leveling the axe proficiency just to get enough to get into the mercenary class, if you can help it, as it could help you with your low strength growth that she's prone to early on in the game. The next character we're going to be talking about is Mercedes, whose personal ability is live to serve. When healing an ally with white magic, unit recovers the same amount of HP. She also has the minor crest of Lamine, which occasionally conserves uses of recovery magic. With a personal skill like Live to Serve and having a minor crest that conserves uses of recovery magic, most people will turn her into a healing role, starting with Commoner, into Monk, into Priest, into Bishop, and finally ending in Gremory. The class progression is the one I recommend the most. Ending in Gremory is the path of least resistance, and it gives her a ridiculous amount of uses in physics that can come in handy as the maps get bigger and bigger as the game continues. She's your token healer, and I recommend using her as one if you can. But maybe you don't like healers, I want power, in which case she can go down the Warlock path and still end in Gremory, starting with Commoner, into Monk, into Mage, into Warlock, and finally ending in Gremory. You can still heal as a Mage and Warlock, just not as much, but I guess in this case you can also depend on Vulinaries and Concoctions to do the healing for you. Her third and fourth option is her riding a horse, starting with Commoner into Monk into Priest into Bishop ending in Holy Knight, or Commoner into Monk into Mage into Warlock and finally ending in Dark Knight. I'm going to combine the descriptions for Holy Knight and Dark Knight together because they both provide almost the same thing and struggle with the exact same thing. Mercedes does not like lances and doesn't care about riding horses. So while you can raise both reason and faith magic relatively easy, raising the two other proficiencies, lances, which she dislikes, and riding is just a big time sink to just put her on a horse. Again, I do not recommend going down this path, but it's an option if you don't mind the extra bits of grinding that you have to do. The final character from the Blue Lion's house is Sylvain, whose personal ability, Philanderer, reads, if a female ally is an adjacent tile, deals 2 extra damage and takes 2 less damage during combat. He also has the minor crest of Gautier, which occasionally allows weapons attacks to strike twice. With that in mind, I think there's going to be one main path that most people will take Sylvain down into, and that's Noble, into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, and finally ending in Dark Knight. This is the path that most people will take Sylvain down into because it takes use of almost everything that Sylvain is good at, plus his budding talent and reason magic. Sylvain also gets a great magic list that he can take advantage of once he gets into the Dark Knight class, as realistically he won't have the strongest magic stat before that. And while you won't take advantage of his axe proficiency, it's still probably one of the best classes to end in in terms of master classes. The other two options that you can consider for Sylvain is Noble, into Soldier, into Cavalier, into Paladin, and finally Great Knight. Or Noble, into Soldier, into Armor Knight, into Fortress Knight, and finally end in Great Knight. The other path is obviously ending in the Great Knight class. While you won't make use of his budding talent and reason magic, you get to use his proficiency in lances, axes, and riding if you go down the Cav path. You can also go down the Armored Knight route since Great Knights prefer a higher armored proficiency over a riding proficiency. So if you don't want to grind out his armor proficiency in a riding class, then the Armored Knight Fortress Knight is an option to consider. The fourth option is Noble into Monk into Mage slash Dark Mage into Warlock slash Dark Bishop and finally ending in Dark Knight. Another class progression that you can go down into is through the Mage route, and if you have a Dark Seal, it's worth dipping into the Dark Mage class to pick up the Dark Magic skills, but it's best to stay in a Mage or Warlock before ending in the Dark Knight class. This path is a little bit more tedious and has a slower start since Sylvain doesn't immediately start with a budding talent and reason, and also has a really low magic stat to start with. And this final and fifth option is Noble into Myrmidon into Mercenary into Hero and then whatever master class that you can put Sylvain into. Sylvain can also make a great hero, but the progression into a master class is a little bit awkward. You can dip into things like Warrior to continue making use of his axe proficiency, but that seems to be about it for the benefits for going down this path. 
So with that in mind, a quick sample team might look something like this. Dimitri as a Great Lord, Didu as a War Master, Annette as a Gremory or Dancer, Ash as a Bow Knight, Felix as a Mortal Savant, Ingrid as a Falco Knight, Mercedes as a Gremory, Sylvain as a Dark Knight. You have great physical units in this route, Felix, Dimitri, and Dudu that are all hard hitting, but in exchange for having some of the best physical units in the game, you tend to lack reason magic users until the later parts of the game. So if you're open to recruiting, a character like Dorothea can help patch up your early to mid game reason magic usage, especially since Annette will most likely end up as a rally bot. And that's not even knocking on her abilities as a character, strength rally is just that good early on in the game. But with that being said, this has been JAIK, thanks for watching. If you're interested in the other houses, you can always check the description below, and if you want more 3 houses content, consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching.